momento intimo tra voi e il mare. An intimate moment between you and the sea. Not a long period of time. Just a moment here and now, without the need for anything else, because everything around you satisfies you and is enough. This is the soul of today's boat, the DNA of the new Geno DB37. Let's begin. This is the boat show. The new DB37 is the model in the range of boats from the French shipbuilding giant Geno. It's the smaller version of its larger sister, the DB43, but it truly has nothing to envy in terms of livability, onboard comfort and attention to detail. The deck layout, along with the interior and the design of the superstructure, is the work of Giannese designer Camillo Garoni. draw inspiration from the most modern automotive aesthetics, making the boat highly attractive and sporty, with a focus on providing maximum comfort on board both during navigation and at anchor. The swimming platform measures 3.45 metres in width and 1.4 metres in depth. In the outboard version, this space would house the bracket, capable of supporting up to two 450 horsepower engines. Naturally, this arrangement sacrifices the habitability of this area, but significantly increases the storage capacity of the stern locker, now used as an engine room. As you can deduct from the name of the range, which is Dayboat by Geno, the focal point of the entire project revolves around providing the maximum livability to anyone on board, literally breaking what may appear to be the geometric limits of a hull. For a maximum beam of 3.56 metres, we have now expanded to a width of 4.9 metres on a 37-foot vessel. Essentially, this area is now a private square on the sea. Thanks to the possibility of sliding one of the cockpit seating modules on two rails, this layout can have four different configurations. Here, up to six diners can have a meal, or well, there are two different options to optimize the sunbathing area, with the largest measuring a generous 1.7 meters by 2.4 meters. Below this space, there is room for storage. The galley module is located amidships. Well equipped and meticulously designed, it can be equipped with an electric hot plate, a stove and a sink, all covered by a Corian countertop. There is a power outlet for kitchen appliances, a storage cabinet, and a 49-litre fridge. At the bow, the DB37 features a walk-around pathway. The anchor is very pronounced, but like all things, it serves a purpose. This is to protect the stem, given the very high bulwark. When hoisting the anchor, it would certainly hit the bulwarks, potentially damaging the hull. So, yes, it's true, it's long, but it's necessary. Below deck, Camillo Garoni's design aims for maximum livability without sacrificing privacy, ensured by four distinct compartments. In the hallway, you'll find the electrical panel, numerous storage cabinets and even a microwave oven. The full-beam owner's cabin reflects the attractive and refined design of the exterior superstructure in its furnishings. The bathroom is well lit and equipped with a separate shower stool. The second cabin serves as the guest cabin and is impressive in terms of its size, considering we're on a 37-foot vessel. It extends to full beam, which, as a reminder, is 3.56 metres at its widest point. It can be configured as twin singles or, with the addition of a central mattress, as a spacious double berth. The only drawback might be the potentially limited natural ventilation due to the one skylight. But don't worry, there's always air conditioning. Now it's time to really test it, but first, let's take a look at how the navigation bridge is organised, which is crucial to immediately get the right feel with the boat. 
Due schermi, due plotter di Raymarin da 12 pollici si vedono benissimo. The two screens, the two 12-inch Raymarin plotters, are clearly visible and perfectly angled. Then there's the Volvo Penta joystick, which of course is also available in the outboard version. Next we have the electronic throttles, interceptors, bow thruster and the on-off buttons. There are two Volvo Penta instruments dedicated to each engine, which of course can display all the engine data on the plotters. Well, there's only one thing left to do. Take charge of the throttles and start. Oggi siamo in Costa Azzurra, precisamente a Beaulieu sur Mer. Today we're in the French Riviera, specifically in Beaulieu sur Mer, and the sea and the wind will certainly be challenging us. We're in a small bay, but as soon as we head out here, it looks like we'll be in for some action. However, in all of this, there's something that keeps me calm, and that's the signature behind the whole design, Michael Peters. So I'm sure this little one will handle herself out there. The inboard version is powered by two Volvo Penta D4 engines, each with 320 horsepower, totaling 640 horsepower. Today, with displacement of 9,000 kilograms, we won't be pushing this vessel to its maximum performance. Of course, we'll be looking at fuel consumption and, most importantly, its navigation capabilities. We're at 12.8 knots, 13 knots at this moment. We've already left the wake far behind. We're consuming 38.5 litres per hour. But at this speed, on the edge of planing, it's one of the conditions where the boat consumes the most. We need to give it a bit more gas, reach 2,800 rpm, to touch 20 knots, and officially enter the first cruising range, the lowest one. At 20.8 knots, we're consuming 69 litres per hour. However, the feeling I have in this case is that the boat needs a bit more speed, a bit more power. Perhaps at 25 knots it will stretch out better on the water. And in fact it does, 24.3, 25 knots, consuming 85 litres per hour, 3,130 rpm. This is its speed, and let's enjoy it with these sea conditions, because this is where the real boat shines. I have quarter sea with roughly 25 to 30 knots of wind, but inside the superstructure, right here at the helm, I'm well protected. There's no gust and, most importantly, no splashes of water. Speaking of the superstructure, it was one of the things that worried me the most when I first saw the designs of the new DB37, because it's imposing with high bulwarks, and my natural concern was understanding where the centre of gravity was. And as always, there's only one way to find out trying to make a turn and see how the boat responds. I'm veering to the left, 25 knots as I enter the turn. A beautiful wave forms, but I can feel how smoothly the hull settles into the trough of the wave. Of course, it throws up a lot of water, but that's a very positive thing. Boats need to lift water. Obviously, we don't want to get wet, but they need to lift it to avoid bouncing on top of it, like pebbles thrown on the water. I set my hands on the throttle. Now I'm heading into the waves. I need to be careful not to drive into one. While turning, I try to tighten the turn as much as possible. It's not incredibly tight, but the boat doesn't heal excessively. I'm at 20 degrees at this moment. Of course, it's rocking because there's a lot of sea. The feeling, I must say, is that of commanding a very solid boat, a boat that gives you confidence, doesn't react excessively to the waves, moves very smoothly, 
who lands after passing the wave just as smoothly. Adesso però è arrivato il momento che più preferisco, beh, lo sapete, perché il cantiere dichiara che... But now my favorite moment has arrived. The shipyard claims that the DB37, with this type of inboard propulsion, totaling 640 horsepower by Volvo Penta, can reach up to 30 knots. And as always today, I have two goals, one to reach them, two to exceed them. Due, superarli! A fondo le manette, sono arrivato a 3600... Full throttle. I've reached 3,640 RPM, touched 31 knots, consuming 124 litres per hour. So, for now, both goals have been achieved. But can I reach 32 knots? I think so. First, I'll clean the windshield. I can't see anything anymore. OK, we're going down the wave. Let's see if we can get a few more turns out of it. I want to reach 3,700 RPM. I did it. We're doing 32.8 knots, 32.9 knots. 33.2 knots, with a total consumption of 125 litres per hour. Not bad. We did it again this time. After testing the DB43, being at the helm of the new DB37 is a tremendous thrill, because I feel like I'm part of the birth of a new generation of Geno boats. Not just cruises in name, but in reality. Boats that allow you to experience the sea to the fullest. Well, what more could you want from a boat? What can you want from a boat?